Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming today. This is our conversation with the PBTA. This is Sandra Sheehan and her assistant administrator, Paul. Paul Burns Johnson. Burns Johnson. Sorry, I can't remember the last name. Um, thank you. Um, we've invited them here today to have a discussion regarding transportation needs within South County. Um, since they cover the majority, or since they cover Sunderland, figure this would be a great opportunity to discuss that. Um, just to give everyone an update, um, between the last meeting that we had with the FRTA and the meeting that we're having today, um, Sandra, myself, and Tina Cody, who was the administrator for uh, FRTA, had a conference call and we discussed the potential of creating a partnership, which I applied for a grant and submitted that last Friday, so we'll see. Um, and they're also working on, uh, I think it was due the same day of a community transportation grant. So we're looking to partner with them to hopefully provide uh, one day of transportation a week together with the Amherst Council on Aging to cover some areas uh, that tread through um, the fixed route section between um, Amherst, Shootsbury, Leverett, Sunderland, um, and Deerfield as well. Or Deerfield Waitley. Waitley. It depends oh, on how yeah. that's Depending on how and the need, right? Correct. Okay. I'm sorry, so, it's a partnership with you, whom? So it? it would be with the South County Senior Center, right. the FRTA, the PVTA, okay. and the Amherst Council on Aging. So basically, what we would be doing is utilizing for this fixed route our Council on Aging van for that one day a week to help offset. But that's also based on whether or not we get our grants that we applied for and if they get their grants that they've applied for jointly. And this is for one day a week, did you say? For us, but for like Amherst Council and Aging also has the transportation van for them, so they would be able to participate. So with the FRTA and so with the PBTA. So it would kind of be shared amongst all four of us. Is that clear enough? Right now we have a grant in for four days. Who's so, way? PBTA. So we would be able to piggyback likely on yours and get five days of service. Yeah. So could you go over the route again? The planned. Oh, yeah, we so, yeah. Well, yeah, I guess we're going to start with that instead of that. Yeah, I didn't so, want to so go just, into this just yet. To clarify, so. that's okay. It, just to clarify, we submitted a proposal. Right. So it doesn't mean that it's funded, but this is uh, the conversations yeah. uh, that we had um, resulted in this and some requests that we've received uh, and Paul and his staff work to get this uh, together. So this is basically an overview of the grant application, uh, the, the details, he, he has all that information, but this is what we're trying to accomplish because we've heard that, you know, obviously there's a disconnect between um, some rural communities and what the fixed route the buses do and what the needs are. So Paul and his staff and Paul can give you more details uh, about the uh, the routing and everything else and, and the partnership. So this is a first step. We'll, once if this is implemented, we'll see what the demand is and what the potential for service in the future might be without the funding sources. But this is a Monday through Thursday grant uh, application as the grant stands now. This would provide two round trip trips from Amherst to Greenfield. We would leave Amherst Center, stop first in Shootsbury, then go to Leverett. Uh, and these are all approximate locations yet until we, you know, once the system's in place, we'll determine the exact locations. But we would go to uh, Shootsbury Town Hall, Leverett Senior Center, uh, the Deerfield Town Hall, I'm sorry, Sunderland Town Hall, then either the South County Senior Center or the Waitley Park and Ride, or perhaps both. Mm -hmm. and then north to Greenfield uh, with this uh, route terminating at um, Berkshire Medical Center, or Bay State Medical Center. Mm -hmm. Which is where? Is that uh, Greenfield. High Street? Um, I'm not sure high. the street. It is High Street. Yeah, High Street. Yeah. High Street. Yeah. High Street. 164 High Street. And, and, <laughs> and in addition to what they've applied for with this, the grant that the South County Senior Center applied for through MCOA last week, the two grants are different grants. Um, our grant was to help fund fares to pay for service from people from Sunderland going into Franklin County on the on-demand system. 
and then funding fares from those going from Franklin County to Hampshire or Hampton County, where we would utilize the grant monies that we received to pay for that because um, a lot of their vehicles are wheelchair accessible vehicles, um, as well as the additional day that we looked for to support this journey the, for the fixed routes. Um, so we would add another day to their collaboration to this fixed route system that you're looking at for the grant they put in for. So it's basically so we can help each other facilitate a fixed route system as well as help structure forward for the on-demand system. So like if you're, if Barbara wanted to go from Wheatley to Northampton, you know, we could facilitate that utilizing the grant money that we have. But all this data would be captured and then moving forward, we could, you know, work together to show the state or whatever funding we're looking at, how we could use this moving forward, what the need is, having numbers. Because as you know, having analytical data is really what helps fund everything. You know, you see all these studies going back and forth from the East-West Rail. How many times have they done that now? Four or five? Um, yeah, so, but it's just solidifying the data and capturing it. So their grant is different than the grant we applied for, but they work together. Um, so that's what our goal is. So am I correct that this is the first service like this for seniors from Sunderland to get to medical appointments at Bay State Greenfield? This is that's a wonderful first step. If there are things that we can do to support that or Thank help you, get the town on board otherwise, we'd love to hear any, any suggestions. That, yeah, I'm um, not sure at this point there's more we need uh, in terms of the application. The application submitted, we've had a lot of community support for that. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, all the elected officials are on board and have supported it appropriately. Yeah. So. Yeah. As you, know, as you know, Sunderland is like in this weird space where mm -hmm. people think we're Hampshire County. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, thank you. Fred or Springfield? <laughs> You've got to understand that Sunderland is halfway between Greenfield and Northampton. Mm -hmm. And doctors are in Northampton. You've got the Silk Mill, which is Florence. And then you've got Springfield, Bay State. So, uh, nothing here says anything about you got Amherst and Greenfield. So, the, so this is something that we were talking, this discussing, thing. and coordinating between the two different F, um, regional transit authorities. So we're here also to inform you because I think it's a lot of information that's not mm -hmm. been um, relayed to the residents of Sunderland. Sunderland is a member of the PBTA. Mm -hmm. And as a member of the PBTA, you receive dialerized service an ADA service that goes along with the fixed route service that comes from downtown Amherst to Whaley and, and beyond. So it's a Route 31. And I don't think a lot of people know about that service. So when you are a member of PVTA, you um, receive dialerized service for anyone that's 60 and over, and we have a little counter about that. And that takes, um, and that, and that takes you um, you call in advance, and it's uh, between Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday, 8, 8 to, 7. to 7 p.m. And you call the service, and we will transport you Thank to you. any member communities of PVTA. So the disconnect that we have is if you want to go to Greenfield. So we, will, we'll, we could bring you to Amherst. We could bring you to Northampton. We could bring you to Hadley. We could bring you to downtown Springfield. We also have the ADA service. It's for individuals that have a disability that prevent, prevents them from using the bus system. So this is a service that is three quarters of a mile on either side of the bus route, so you won't be able to walk or um, use your mobility device because they might not be sidewalks or anything like that for you to get to a bus stop. For this one, you have to fill out an application and your de uh, eligibility is determined by the PBTA, whether you uh, qualify for that service or not. And this service, the difference between this service and that service basically is that this service operates during the same hours and the same days as the bus system. That one is Monday through Saturday, 8 to 7 p.m. Which one is the same as the bus, this one? The ADA. 
the Americans with Disabilities Act service. That one's called the dial ride that's for seniors 60 and over that want to access the PBTA system. And the last time we were on 91, it was probably close to 5 o'clock. There goes the, the vans going, going by us, heading south. So Yes, because they cover Hampton and Hampshire County. So they don't exactly stop at the, the 2 o'clock or whatever they go. Well, when, when the van won't stop. Unless you're, that's an appointment based door to door or curb to curb trip. So you have to book no, a trip for the van. I think he said that the van was going back to the garage or something? South, south on 91. In right. fact, they passed us. There was two of them that passed us. So, right. I, I, so, so the vans, we have like 134 vans that provide service in the entire valley. So the PBTA communities are 24 communities, Hampton and Hampshire County. Hampton and Hampshire County. So if you see the vans, they're going to bring bringing people to different places. There might be someone in Northampton that has an appointment in Springfield. There might be someone in Amherst that has an appointment in Northampton. So the vans are circulating throughout the whole valley from the times. It depends on the service. If it's ADA services, within the hours that the bus system operates. If they're riding on the dialer ride, which is the same van and it's the same operators, it's for elderly that it's 60 and over between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Monday through Saturday. There's no Sunday service. And they, we don't ask you where you're going, why you're going, or anything like that. Medical appointment, if you're going to go to the movies or you want to go to the mall, you can go in. So when you say the vans were going by, what do you mean by that? They were passing us. We were, we were oh, you were going. Our, so they were both heading. And, and I think about uh, 2 o'clock to let you know I was, but this, and a lot of appointments that I now have with my wife are like four o'clock or somewhere toward the end of the day. Yeah. And and then sometimes they run late. Mm -hmm. Now we get there, we can't see it because you're you're late too. So. So the, uh, so we you you took PDT and you arrived late. Yeah. Okay. So that shouldn't be happening. So that I mean we would need. When did that happen? Yeah. You know the date and time. No, for sure, no. But that we've had uh, instance. Was that. was that that like this year, last month? No, probably within the month. Within the month, I want to say. Okay, so you arrived up to your appointment late, and when was your appointment? Um, yeah. Was in Springfield? Yeah, yeah. And we had one in in, in Amherst at the uh, uh, Valley Medical Center over there. And you arrived at both appointments late? Late, and they couldn't couldn't take us a week. They said, you'll have to reschedule. Okay. And, and so, so when you made the appointments, did you make the appointments saying, I'm going to the doctors and this is an appointment base. I need to be there no later than that? No, we didn't. We didn't. Okay. We didn't do that. So, we need, so. We need to, when you make an appointment for a doctor's appointment, you need to say this is an appointment based trip. So then that tells the computer, they click on it, and it will say, you can, when the, the system schedules at the end of the day, it will say, this trip cannot be performed any later than that. It has to arrive before that time. So when you make a, a doctor's appointment and you call us, make sure that the uh, reservationist knows that it's a doctor's appointment, you cannot be any later than, you know, like five minutes before or whatever. Because the system at the end of the day takes all the trips and shuffles them and they start sending them to different vehicles. And so it depends on the type of trip. If the trip says this, then sometimes they get moved half an hour late or half an hour before by the computer system. But if it's an appointment trip, it will not be moved late, it will be moved up. Do you follow that? Yes. Okay. So uh, but if anything happens, we can give her our business card and you can call us and let us know if you arrive late because we contract with a vendor to do this and if they are arriving late we need to know because they're penalized for arriving late to locations mm -hmm. so so that's one of the things you know we talked about before is making sure to bring issues up when they happen not waiting so long because then like if you wait too long it you know they could deal with it but it may not be able to help you immediately and then you know it's causing issues for the future appointments you have so for your return trip how did that happen you have to stay there until the, the man went back to pick you up no I I transported my, my wife 
thing. This is my, my experience doing the whole thing. I'm just asking how you would deal with it. Oh, okay. So that's so, so again, you may you call the, the number, and if you're not registered with PVTA, you just have to say your name, your date of birth, and we will register you as a dial -a ride client. If you're looking for ADA, that requires an application. Once you're registered with PVTA, you call the number and say, I want to book a trip for a doctor's appointment. My appointment is at this time, on this day. And so they will start working with you and say, I'm gonna pick you up at this time, more or less. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, or at the day of your appointment, or the day before your appointment, you'll receive a, a, um, a voicemail message, a phone call saying, you're set for tomorrow, your appointment, your, your pickup time is at this time. And then the vehicle will arrive within so 10 minutes. They'll give you a 20-minute window. 10 minutes, yeah. They'll so they'll say, your appoint, your, if you need to be someplace at 3.30, for example, they'll call you and say your pickup is at between uh, 3.10 and, or, I'm sorry, between 2.30 and maybe 3.20. Uh, I'm sorry, 2.30 and, and 2.50. So they give you that 20-minute window to get to your appointment. They'll make sure that you're there before that 3.30 time. So and that's how it works. So, an and they'll let you know. So we'll give you the window so that you are ready for within that window we, we may, we'll get there in between that window I want to get back on track to um, following just some questions that we've just, come up with before I just want to make sure that yeah. you got it and, and we can talk one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you know how to make that trip to make sure that you can bring your wife and you can go with your wife to the appointment okay. on the vehicle Doing it we're going to okay. <laughs> So, so we're gonna. Do you have questions on what she was just talking about? No, it, just if you're still on the same it's topic. Okay. okay. So, sorry, we started off a little okay. differently. No, Maybe that's we, fine. We had planned. So, um, uh, we we did introduce Sandra and Paul. So, um, what what our goal is is we had uh, put together a work group discussing needs a need the results of needs assessment we had done in New Hampshire, um, Franklin County, specifically um, the South County area, which includes Deerfield, Whaley, and Sunderland. We came up with and determined from most of the survey done, one was done by UMass Gerontology, the other was done by FERCOG, and the top issue that we had determined, second issue to housing, was transportation. Um, so over the course of the eight meetings that we've had so far, just to let you know, we determined, you know, we did this tree exercise. The lack of transportation really influences so many other things within mm -hmm. the community and people's behaviors. Food choices, where to go shopping, is it healthy food, a regular medical care, underemployment um, and unemployment because there's no transportation to get to where they're working. Um, exercise. You know, maybe they're not able to get to the physical fixed location. Um, and one of the other questions that came up, which we'll talk about later, was how close do you have to be to be a fixed route in order to get an on-demand service? Um, social activity decreases, which leads to isolation, especially amongst older adults. Um, and we, you know, one of the things that we learned from our data is that there are a good portion of older adults who stop driving um, or have to depend on family members or may not have that family locally here to, um, you know, to call for transportation services. So these behaviors then lead to these issues. Uh, we came up with a multitude of health issues. So you have heart issues, diabetes, eating disorders, addiction, cancer, dental, foot health, mobility, vision, hearing, mental health, dementia, and hoarding. And you may wonder, how does this all connect? Well, when someone doesn't know where they're going to be able to go to the grocery store, they're going to start hoarding food, even if it's bad, because now they don't know when they're getting it. And up in our area, it essentially is a food desert, because the closest grocery store is 15 minutes south or 15 minutes north of here. There's like, you know, your typical um, bodega style stores or like a smaller market, um, but they don't carry all the essential items you may need for groceries. Um, mental health, because now you're isolating and, um, you know, now maybe you're uh, decreasing what you're eating because you only have access to so much. 
um, diabetes because you're now missing these medical appointments. Same with heart issues, cancer, dental, um, and they all interconnect. And I'm sure you've seen um, seen that in your research that you've done as well. Um, but then one of the other key pieces we talked about was lack of knowledge about transportation, which is why we wanted to invite um, you you here to have this discussion. Um, and I know we started a little differently because we started off with the grant process um, to try to create that partnership. Um, but the other thing that people don't talk about too is the housing options. We're now looking at a existential housing market crisis, which really um, means the further outside the city you live, uh, the less access you have to transportation because there are, as you, as you know from where you provide services, um, you know, there's really a big gap in like the Hilltown areas and other places and the, sometimes the, the cost of the housing market in those Hilltowns can be higher or lower depending on what, you know, someone's been there a long time, but then, you know, all the taxes and other things are going up so people can't afford to stay, so where are they going? Um, and that really influences there. So, um, so one of the things that we wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to grab this seat here, is with the current public transportation routes, you know, um, we know that there's a, there's a gap. And we know you're currently working on... We don't know I did introduce them before. I could do that. Don't worry. My, my name is Sandra Sheehan. My name is Sandra Sheehan. I am the administrator of the Pioneer Valley Transit Authority. Uh, we have uh, 24 communities within the Pioneer Valley that are members of PBTA, and we are responsible for ensuring that they have access to what you said, the community, doctor's appointments, and whatnot. And as you mentioned, I think one of the things that we find out when we go to different locations is that there's not enough information that has been made available. And so we're working on that. We are improving on the outreaches that we do. and. You know, sometimes it's the squeaky wheel that gets the most attention, and obviously Springfield, Pueblo, Chicopee are the ones that are, uh, squeak the loudest, <laughs> and then uh, that's where we seem to have more most of our uh, outreaches and events. Well, we're just going to have to get noisier. Aren't yes. We? <laughs> and uh, to my right is uh, Paul. And I'm uh, Paul Burns Johnson. I'm the director of transit operations for PBTA. So I oversee all the just all the day-to-day -day activities, including route planning and including. Um, just determining where service might need to be and then making sure that you know, the buses run and employees get hired and the vans run, and yeah. all the basic day-to-day -day nuts and bolts issues. And any complaints or anything that's going mm -hmm. on that needs to be addressed with the contractors. Mm -hmm. Very similar to FRTA, uh, in Massachusetts, the transit authorities are not allowed to operate the service, so we contract the service out. So for our bus system, the system that is served by Sunderland, it's operated by UMass Transit. PBTA has a contract with UMass Transit Services, which is a division of the university, to provide services to this area. So they provide services you know, between South Hatley, a portion of Granby, uh, Amherst, Belchertown, Sunderland, a little bit of Leverett, like a little corner, and uh, the service ends at Wavy, and you just saw the bus go by, and that's the Route 31. And, Part of the service is to bring everybody into downtown Amherst. Uh, part of the service is also to provide transportation to the five colleges. Uh, it's just one of the, you know, PBTA system. We are, as, as you know, the Pioneer Valley is also known as the knowledge corridor, so a lot of our service, it's geared partly also to the students to ensure that the students have access to education and everything else that they need. In the southern portion of our system, uh, we contract with DGR management. They operate the garage in Springfield and the garage in Northampton. So we have three transit garages. Uh, the garage in Northampton provides service to Northampton, Hadley, East Hampton, Holyoke, Williamsburg, and, and that area in between. We connect with FRTA at the Academy of Music in Northampton and at the Whaley Park and Ride lot here. Uh, the routes that come down from FRTA connect with the PBTA routes and then you can transfer and, and then access the system. But obviously that is not sufficient for the rural communities. It was working when you're going to Greenfield and Amherst, but it's not working for the rural communities. Um, and we also have a contract for the van service. So you saw, well I haven't seen a van go by, but 
Um, we have a smaller vehicles, not as big as the one that FRTA has. It's nine to 11 passenger vehicles. They're lift equipped. So if you have a disability, you can ride the lift into the vehicle. And we have two types of services. The dial a ride, which is the one for 60 and older. And then we also have the ADA, which is for anyone that has a disability. And you could be a senior with a disability, or you could be a young person with a disability. And it's not a physical disability, it's a cognitive, any type of disability that prevents you from utilizing the bus system. And that's how you qualify for the ADA program. So any resident of the member communities of PBTA is eligible to ride those systems. Whether the bus is close enough, uh, if the bus is not close enough and you're 60 and over, then you can use the dial a ride service. And if the service is close enough but you have a disability, then you could use the ADA service. And so Paul and I, one of our responsibilities is just to keep a track of the different areas and see where there's a need and see how we can make change. So when we were approached by Shootsbury and uh, some of the different communities saying, you know, we need to go south. A lot of our appointments are in Northampton and Springfield. Mm -hmm. We started a conversation with Tina, uh, Paul uh, and his staff put together a, a route and said, you know, Sandra, the, the grant is coming up. Should we make an application on this? And we talked to you and we talked to Tina and said, okay, we're gonna do it and see what happens and let's try it and, and see how we can make improvements. And then, like you said, show the funding sources that there is a need for something besides the regular fixed route and the regular dial ride paratransit service that we provide. So that's what we are trying to do. Can I just ask a question on of what course. you're saying? Yes, of course. Um, Anytime, interrupt us. Uh, so the ADA service is also a call when you need a ride to get someplace and they'll come back and get you when you need to come yes. back. Now, can this be, the question is, um, could it be a young person who's disabled and can't drive, yes. but can hold a job in Greenfield? Of course. Could this service pick up this person at their house, deliver them to Greenfield, and bring them back six this hours is, later? This is where we have a little bit of a disconnect in which yeah. We can bring you to any PBTA member communities. We can go south. To go north, we have to coordinate with FRTA and transfer the person. Whether we transfer them at the Whaley Park and Ride is something that we are talking with FRTA. So if we bring someone from here, because we are, we that's a different transit system, and that's one of the things that we're trying to find out with this grant, how much of a coordination can we just both go back and forth? Because the way that the, the transit authorities are funded um, is based on the ridership in each community, the miles in each community. So if we start going over there, does she get the money for the miles or do we get the money for the Well, the reason miles? that I asked was because this young person who I know yeah. had a job in Greenfield. Sometimes she could have to wait three or four hours for the bus to get home. The bus or the van? The, no, the PBTA bus that would service Greenfield back this way. They don't go to Greenfield. We don't go to Greenfield. So Sunderland is only covered by PBTA. Deerfield and Waitley is covered by the FRTA. So that's the reason that we're, you know, South County and PBTA and FRTA are working to partner as to how we can pay for transportation for, we base it on older adults, but obviously those people with um, different abilities who would be dependent on an on-demand system for transportation would be able to qualify if they you know, reached out to either um, transportation facility. So that's, that's the goal. So right now, that's, that can't happen because there is that line across um, it could happen through ADA, but it's going to be much more complicated. Right. Yeah. Because the individual would have to transfer at Waitley. They'd have to, if they're in Sunderland, they'd have to get the transportation from front, Sunderland to Waitley, and then wait to connect with uh, FRTA to connect from Which makes it Waitley. untenable. It, it yeah. makes it very difficult. I mean, right. well, we, we can try to streamline the process, but there's still, you've got to coordinate two vans that are going to have, still, they have some kind of a window in their operating system. It's right. still public transit, so it's not a taxi, so it's just more difficult to get everything lined up quickly and affordably. So it's probably, I mean, if you're going to transfer, you probably have to plan on waiting a half an hour in between trips. Yeah. So, and so what we're trying to do, and so what the attempt with this grant is to try to see how much of the need is to go from here to there and from there down here, and then how 
the two transit systems are going to coordinate and operate that. So we're asking someone to, okay, fund it for us, we'll work it out, we'll see how it goes, and then we can sit down with all the stakeholders and say, okay, this is how it's the best way for us to do this, and FRT said this is how it is, and we all agree on how we can coordinate the two systems. Because on the bus it works, you know, Whaley, the two buses you transfer and you go, you go to the Academy of Music in Northampton, you take the Route 31 and transfer to any of the PVTA routes at the Academy of Music in Northampton, and you can take a bus directly to Springfield. So that's a lot easier to do, you just do the buses. But this one, you know, you have to unload somebody, you have to have a location, does it have a shelter, does it have light? Is that the middle of the summer, how hot is this? Can this person be left there for half an hour? Things like that, you know, some disabilities you can't. And so that's where we're trying to like figure out the best way to do it. But if you're saying this person's working in Springfield and we can pick them up and bring them to Springfield, then we will do that. This just happens to be. And, and, and it's some of the, you know, it's, it happens the same thing if you're working. We're so close to the Connecticut border. If you're in Springfield and you work in the Connecticut border, we have to drop you off somewhere in Enfield for someone from Connecticut Transit to pick you up and take you. Because we can't just go over the border either. So it's kind of like that. And you, you know, obviously things have changed. In, in the past, everyone was like, okay, we, we, we belong to this side, they belong to over there, but now we're more of a global statewide community and we have to go everywhere. But the challenge now is still figuring out those connections and that'll take some time. But this grant application would at least address that need between the hours of nine and two, Monday through, it sounds like possibly Friday if we all get the, the grants that were awarded. Do other, are there any place else in the state where uh, abiding transit systems have faced similar? So what they do is mostly on the bus system and then they find like a, like a union station okay. or some place yeah. like that for them to transfer indoor location. You wait there and then another van comes to pick you up. There's a lot of transfer closer to Boston from the RTAs to the MBTA, all the right. rail line and all, so they bring you to the station and then you're in the station and they go. But it's the outlying stations that don't really go all the way to Boston. They bring you somewhere so you can connect. So we're trying to do the same here, but we realize that sometimes because we're in such rural communities and not all the communities have a bus service that goes along 116, Route 5 or whatever to get to Greenfield, that we have to be more innovative and think outside of the box. Right. And that's what we're trying to do. First steps. Yes. Okay. You mentioned that when you speak to people and go around, you notice that there's a lack of information. And, uh, <coughs> wife and I have noticed that around here in a number of fields, not just in transportation, uh, it's difficult sometimes to get information to seniors. And sometimes you get that, oh, it's online. I'm not sure that's the most effective way th at that point. Have you ever considered uh, getting a list of seniors for Sunderland for wait for whatever town and, and just mailing them some sort of uh, schedules, brochures, whatever yeah. you may have at hand, in addition to, hey, this is our website, or these are our phone numbers, or whatever. But uh, targeting all the folks that couldn't get to this meeting, for example, or, right. or may need to, you see the shortcomings. Uh, um, do you think, and I'm speaking, I live in the town of Hamden, uh, by, which, by the way, doesn't have any has very limited transit service. Yeah. There's no very limited paratransit. And I was in a committee that they could get the listing of all the residents. Do you know if there's a listing? Because they do the census that they will know out of the residents which ones are seniors. Yep. Yeah. So, so we, you could get it One of the goals. from the town hall? Yes. yes. So okay. I have that information already. We're doing a mailing that's going out um, this weekend or tomorrow. And one of the goals that we're doing is with the PBT FRTA, we're going to ask you about having 
brochures here at the senior center for folks who need that. So we're going to have a nice display go up on the wall. But these are things that we're going to let people know that we offer regularly. So if they need to have that information, you know, if they call so, I mean, and ask. you could share that, yep. that mailing list with these folks if they it's find it yeah, useful. It's public information, but um, I'll, I'm actually, I'll have a better list for you, like for a mailing list that we had to break down through the census residential information that we have. Yeah, so that's when we process. We're, where's the wood here? Oh, the floor. <laughs> Not going to work. If we get the money from the grant, we could send them all uh, yeah. information and say we're going to start this grant program and all that stuff. And then we get more information about the alignment and where is the best place to start right. and how we can do this. And you know, have a, like a hearing or something mm -hmm. like that where they can all come in yeah. and give us information. If not, you could just do surveys or whatnot. We, we get a lot of information. And you know, sometimes one of the things that we have difficulty with is. Sometimes we just need to get transit information to the users, and I think we do a pretty good job of that, but not to the non-users or the people that are in the. Well, it's hard to get it out to people who don't know we exist, right? Which is the biggest part. And then, how do you identify yeah. who those folks are? I'm just thinking of the senior right now. Yes. The senior, yes. particularly the senior list. And we, do you have to wait for the grant to do this? I uh, know we could send you information, I mean, yeah. uh, but I'm, I was just thinking that. Um, to get more detail on the alignment and things like that, that. Would be, that would it would be, be a, 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 an ideal uh, to get something like that. That is also something we could potentially work out for. Um, we're currently part of the Mass in Motion grant process through FERCOF. So we uh, were doing a mailing because, as you mentioned, not everyone knows you exist, even though you've been around for you know for a very long time. Um, the senior center has been around for more than 40 years and over 50% of the folks who were surveyed didn't know what they did, what they offered. So we're doing a mailing to let people know of what we offer, but that's also something we could help and do another mailing partway through saying, you know, did you know that we have information on local transportation, uh, you know, brochures, and if you need the FRTA or the PBTA, you can reach them here to, you know, to try to facilitate that. Um, we're more than happy to do that. Because that's one of the things that we wanted to talk about. Um, when we did the work group, um, for the eight weeks, we came up with a bunch of questions that the majority of people who participated wanted to know is, you know, do you have, a, how often do you update your uh, brochures at the sites, you know, at the bus stops? Because obviously not every bus stop is, um, can facilitate having a hanging placard or something with that information. We all know rain gets in there, snow. Um, so, when do you decide to put those out, or how often do those get updated at the sites so that do have that? For the most part, when we make a change to the schedule, especially in the UMass Transit Service Area, they, um, when we do that, they will post that. And most of the schedules change with the fall schedule because the new semester starts and everything like that. And so we are operating on a reduced schedule right now because, not only because it's the summer, but also because we don't have sufficient staff at UMass Transit Services. We expect that to increase this summer and for us to go back to full service. Um, so there will probably be a change sometime in September and they will go out to all the bus stops. And when the class starts. So class starts end of August, I first think it's uh, September 4th. September 4th, okay. So for the, that Sunday before the start of classes. So then September. they will come out that month in September and start changing all the notices on the shelters and the bus stop locations. So as you're talking about, you know, majority in Sunderland being run by the UMass Transit, one of the concerns or questions that came up is um, do you discount so if their fare here is free because you know everyone who gets on in the region goes to UMass to transfer over or to like wait Amherst. When they get that transfer, do they then have to pay for the transfer, you know, when you get a transfer, do you pay additional monies when you go to another bus route? They would have to pay the full fare on the next route. Okay. So there's no way to transfer from the UMass system okay. to buy a transfer in the UMass system and then connect with the rest of the system. So basically, if someone were to get on the bus here, the fixed route system, mm -hmm. go to wherever the stop is at UMass, they would have to get to 
let's just go with the shopping center I'm happy I want to go to Target mm -hmm. I would pay from UMass to Hadley the full fare for that is what you're in right. sharing so so then I'll bring you to this if you are 60 and over and you're 60 and over you qualify for half a fare on the PBTA system so the UMass if you want to go to Hadley you have to take the B43 from Amherst to uh, the shopping center, the Target. So instead of paying a dollar fifty, you will pay seventy cents. Is it seventy cents? So seventy-five cents. No. Oh yeah, that's right. Dollar fifty. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not good at math. It's okay. So, I, wasn't, I wasn't that good. At so time, we so. do come over to the Amherst Cancellation Agent, things? and we can okay. come here too and and take picture IDs and issue a PVT ID, which, you know what, I can't find my PVT ID. And it looks like this, and on the other side, it has your picture. Mm -hmm. So when you get on the bus, you flash it to the driver, and he knows or she knows that you're on a special fare, and you mm -hmm. only pay half a fare. And on Tuesdays, seniors ride for free on the bus system at PVT. That's great. See, that's not something that everyone knows so now, but we can come here on a day that you make sure they have a lot of people yep to oh, issue ids that'd be great That's and then we can ask. come over and then do that and then everybody can get their id uh we have to go back and print them but with them we'll can come over and give them all to you and you can deliver them as they come into the center but that's what we do in East Hampton and Amherst, and we do that like almost every month. We go to the senior centers and do that. Great, because we would really like to be partners to be. I only able have to so many copies, so. Grace, can you and this is from our one? website. I just took. Yeah, it I did take um, a bunch of information when I was doing the grant applications for the pricing. Your stuff is very clear and concise. So. So what I'm hearing you say is that you definitely could come here oh, of course. once a month or, or as needed as for needed. getting that. Um, now, with because we are also in an area where um, you know there's different apartment complexes and stuff for people who may not be um, you know a senior, but if they needed an ID for the bus for whatever reason, they would be able to come on those dates as well, it wouldn't be just for older Oh, adults, yeah. right? yes, of okay. course, of course. Right. Because, you know, that's one of the things that we've seen is the access for people to be able to get those IDs in different locations. They may have to go to Springfield, Holyoke, or Greenfield, you know, if for the FRTA, and people are obviously able to get there. Um, so that would be wonderful. You so also qualify for the past if you are SSI, SSI and SSDI, or if you have any right. kind of a medical condition that's documentable, you would need to fill out an application sure. process, but it has to be a disabling okay. medical condition. Medicaid, okay. for Medicaid the, or Medicaid. For, for the uh, half fare. Yes. For I can make more fare. copies. Yeah, yeah. that's if fine. Anyone, it's mm -hmm. an SSI and all that stuff. That's great because um, we do work a lot um, on our. Food Truck Wednesdays, yes. we offer a, um, a pop-up food pantry at the parish location. That's in South Deerfield. Okay. Um, so I don't know how you would feel about going there because it is, you know, the location, but for people who attend there, they um, they qualify for a lot of other programs like and, SNAP. And they're from and Sunderland and Leverett. Yes, they're from a lot of places, not just from Deerfield. Okay. Um, so my, my question would be, if we needed to, we could, well, we could do two things that day. We could just pass out the information on the day that we're doing it, and we could also offer the transportation with our van to bring them down here. But would you be willing to go to yeah. that? If I mean, because it's not transportation, it's just for the items. No, 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 that, that's fine. I mean, as long as we have a covered location where we can plug our system yep. and take pictures and get all the yeah. information, we can do that. Because we have a lot of folks um, who come that second Wednesday of every month who are of high need um, for food support. Exactly. And that's and why we travel to try and teach um, people how to use this uh, we're actually going to be doing that. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah, that's really important. So, so one of the things um, we would definitely love to have any physical, tangible brochures because we are going to have a nice dis visual display. We do have quite a bit of things from the. I'm going to leave those here with you. Great. Um, privacy. Well, um, so you covered a lot of these other things but one of the other important questions was have you considered putting a bus stop in front of the sanderson place it's a new senior housing project um on route 47 here 
going, like if you were to come to the four-way stop after you leave here, you take a right and it's literally maybe a half mile or half a block um, mm -hmm. up the road here. Eight, eight of a mile, it's right next door to the Blue Heron restaurant. Right around the corner, no worries. So that's something that- um, Is that on the current route? Um, I don't believe so. Yeah. It's, it's no, not. It's not five and 10. It's North Main. I'd have to actually look at it and so analyze the location. So Route 47? It's yes. on Route 47. It just, the se wow. it's senior housing, they recently opened, I believe, move-in was around October or so, but they celebrated their grand opening. What's the name of it? Sanderson Place. Um, it's kind of par across the street units? from, there's 33 okay. units. It's kind of across the street from like the school street if you turn to left to get to the uh, Sunderland's town hall. Okay. It's on the opposite side of the road there. And then the other one is, there is at, on 47 going the opposite way, going towards Hadley, um, there is a market called Millstone Market. Um, and that area doesn't have a lot of good sidewalks. Um, and we have another gentleman who is um, visually, who has visual impairments, he's legally blind. Um, and you know, he wanted to get off in a certain space but um, was told he couldn't get off until he got to the Sugarloaf Estates. Um, so we are just curious about going, not just the Millstone Market, but also a little further down to the police department um, in Sutherland. If he wants to take the bus to do this, he doesn't yes. want to do the van. Um, he takes the fixed route system with his son. His son helps him. He just typically does that, like if they're going somewhere, he'll will usually use the fixed route system. Um, but I will, you know, let him know that he does no, have the, the option yeah, I mean, for doing the yes. direct point to point service. Um, this is how people get off on a non scheduled uh, non bus stop in a case like that. Well, that's a safety outlet. Yeah, that's typically, there are situations in rural communities where you might allow a flag stop. But the problem with any flag stop, which is what that would be, is it's a safety issue, number one. There's also no consistency of service. So you might be standing at what you perceive to be a bus stop that isn't a defined stop. And the driver is only going to stop if they can pick you up and if it's more or less a quasi-approved location. So you might get left behind because there's no safe way to stop. Um, there's no convenient place to stop. It all depends on the conditions on the road at the time. So yeah, I didn't mean that so much as getting off the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Even they getting off is, is still kind of the same thing because if there's no guarantee it's going to be a safe place to stop. Um, I don't know if there's any significant liability issue, but I know drivers are concerned just dropping somebody off at a place they don't perceive to be safe. So that when we pick a location, we talk to DPW and, and the different agencies to make sure that you have the site distance, someone pulling out, the bus mm -hmm. is coming in, right. and so that you meet all the safety requirements because you're unloading someone and you want to make sure that everybody can see that person. As you know, sometimes children are riding the system, so we just want to make sure that everyone that's riding is safe and you have individuals with disability, mm -hmm. and we're going to go like, well, we don't usually leave you off here, and how are you going to get somewhere? And so it's, it's a little, sometimes the decision is up to the operator that's driving the vehicle, uh, but for the most part, we prefer to stop at designated stops. Yeah. Um, I know the gentleman who we were talking about with the vision parent um, did mention you know, it would be a great thing for the fixed route to go to the safety complex for the police department anyways, because able-bodied folks you know, still may need to get there, um, and there is no sidewalk going down that far on 47. So it was just, you know, um, not just for his, but for anybody's use for that space. Um, There's another route that comes out of that process too. So that's where we said it. And that's the challenge with some of these locations. Even just looking at the, the uh, San Francisco uh, location across from Blue Heron, we have to deviate from the regular route. I don't see on a quick analysis an easy place to turn the bus around. So then we're going to have to go through a lot of our way to find a place to turn around safely. 
then turn the bus around and come back out. So it, it's not that it can't be done. We just have to really look at how and see if there's a convenient way to turn it around. Well, there are here. You know if that housing complex has the ability to pull you in. You can turn pull around. in, turn all around with the bus, and is come right back. Is there a lot out. of parking there, though, because there is, but it's circular. So it's circular. So, and we can look at it and, yeah. and see what might be able to happen there. Be because there are 33 housing units in that building, so I think that would you know, potentially mm -hmm. be an increase in ridership. And that's Sanders in place? Yep. It's the new senior housing in town. The public safety complex, just this location seems like that's going to be much more problematic in that. Yeah, it there's not like a really a easy way to, than to it is turn a, around. A bus stop. How far do you, so do you go down 47 at all to no. get down into Hadley that way? Past the Sugarloaf Estates? I have to, I'd have to look at the route in a little more detail. No, you turn on uh, Amherst Road. Yeah, you yeah. go back Amherst Road. To make a Amherst loop around Road, and come yes. back to 116. Yeah. Yeah. We turn around on the Sugarloaf Estates mm -hmm. yeah. and then come back and then take Amherst Road. We don't take 47. Mm -hmm. Is the reason uh, not adding another route that way is there's not a lot of ridership? Correct. Ridership, funding, um, and resource, and just staff. More of a rural area along here, you have all those apartment complexes. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. the problem. 47. Also, that's something that there's no ridership because there's no availability of transportation. You know, so it's like well. this so vicious. So it might be something that comes up in the future because mm -hmm. there may be some drivers of uh, ridership on that route, but right now it's not. So one of the other thoughts that we had had before was um, knowing how you advertise for the trans for the jobs for drivers because we we had discussed about we have a lot of people who retired who are still able to drive who can still contribute to society you know for another ten years or more who are looking for part time work and we didn't know about maybe having a job fair or just advertising providers that, you know, to connect them with you, if that's something. Oh, John, yeah, he uses great. Part All kinds of senior jobs. And they, uh, yeah, we, have, we have a couple of operators that might have some interest in that. Uh, oh, for the bus system, you need a CDL, so we will have to yeah. train you to get a CDL license, yeah. but if you're talking for the van system. But but there are people um, you know who may have been a school bus driver or you yeah. know who worked more hours and now they just want to cut back or maybe they only want to work two days a week. So it's just an opportunity for us to you know help bridge uh, your need and, and people that attend the senior center um, you know to see if uh, people may be interested in in jobs that you have uh, because you know and the other thing too is. While people say senior center, we do provide uh, services and resources and stuff to anyone 55 and older. So someone who's 55 still looking for work may not be able to do like a, a machine operator job they've been doing for a long time. They're just looking for a change of career yep. and um, you know could, could partner them there because I think sometimes they don't know where to find that type of connection even though they've looked at other job resources. I just want to turn that up. Any questions? Just like, couple, always, always. Um, you know, sort of from our, from, as a Sunderland resident perspective, we sort of feel like, well, we're being left out of something. We're just not kidding. We're trying to try to get to Greenfield. There's still, your proposal for funding this demonstration project is not an on-demand service, right? That's it's a more of a fixed route service. A fixed route but service. We could deviate from the fixed route about three quarters of a mile. Okay, but, there, but there's it. basically still no on demand for someone who wants to go to the state Greenfield. Not easily. No. Not easily. We, we would okay. have to coordinate yeah, again. We have to coordinate so that, that transportation that's, through. That's the that main. And, and that's something that we're working with at RTA to make it happen. And that's also and the, really the grant that we put in for it. I appreciate that. But sort of from, you know, well, we're not quite there with FRTA, we're not quite there with PBTA. Can you give the town a financial break <laughs> that could be used? I mean, it sounds like a wise-ass question, but it's not meant that way. It's, it's sort of like uh, somehow for folks in this town, it's got to, and you can say whatever you'd like to do, it's got to be funded. Mm -hmm. 
uh, can the PBTA contribute toward something working out with FRTA? Well, that's what we're trying to do. Can, we're trying can. to coordinate a transfer point where we can coordinate that. Okay. So Tina so, and, and I are working on I mean, it's, it's interesting because someone was just mentioning earlier, um, FRTA goes into Hampshire County, even though they sort of say, you know, sort of, but they, and they're, they're really out, sometimes out there always. Yes. And, you, and you folks nip at, you know, shoots for a lover, corner lover, but, but anyway. Um, so one of the things is that she has a lot of volunteer drivers and we have uh, regular drivers. So trying to make sure that if we book a trip and said we're going to transfer it here, that we can't actually make it happen. So um, we're working on that. And we really appreciate it. No, no, no. We, we understand and we know that there is a need. Like I said, we're trying to think outside of the box of the best way for us to do this. And, you know, whether we have the capacity to take a vehicle out of our service area, because once you go there, you're not bringing anybody else, and when you're there, you're not bringing anybody down. And that's what we're trying to figure out. If there's anybody else from here that might want to go there, and while we're there, is there anyone from there that wanna come down here? And then she can do the same thing. So that's some of the things that we're trying. We have different software systems for scheduling mm -hmm. trips. You know, how do we communicate that to them without having to use, um, like I said, you know, when someone books the trips at the end of the day, a software computer system gets all the trips. We perform over 900 trips, seven, between 700, 700 right now but before day. the pandemic, we used to do 1,200 trips a day. So at the end of the day, with own so many vehicles, you have to move them and organize in the best way possible. She has one system, we have a totally different system. But so I think that's why this is this pilot project is proposed because this will at least allow us to say, look, we have trips that are going to Bay State, uh, Bay State Franklin on these days at these times so that at least we can start to group trips and see what the demand is. And there may be some other ways that we can do that with the demand response system as well. Part of it's gonna have to be, we'll need folks to be flexible enough to say, look, I can only go to the doctor up there, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, or whatever those days work out to be. I think we could probably work out a system where we grouped trips and mm -hmm. shared it with, uh, with with FRTA in some respect. That would be the most logical and convenient way for us to do it, in a, you know, be able to do it in an affordable way. Otherwise, you're taking a van out for two hours for one trip, and then that's not, that's not in the operator's interest because they're not getting paid. So it just there's a lot of challenges on that end of it. So I think that's why we need to be looking more towards a group trip or covering your way up there. Yeah. And one of the things that we're going to be doing um, probably in August, we're going to take a field trip uh, for those interested to um, leave from Sunderland and go south, and then leave from you know Deerfield and go north. So that way people can have an actual tangible way, you know, getting and doing a field trip on the bus. So we're all going together for those who want to do it. Um, we're in the process of scheduling that. So we'll make sure everyone gets on, knows how to use the system, knows you know how to bring, push the buzzer, pull the string, whichever, you know, I don't know what it's been, it's been a while since I've used this. Well, we also, we do have a travel training program, which we'd be happy to you know, share, we could share those resources with you. We have Great. two travel trainers who would come up and they would be able to provide some basic training for the, the uh, people as a group or individually. And we are also developing a video series identifying just the items you're talking about, how to drive, how to request a stop, how to board the bus on a day. And we'll be able to share that soon in about six weeks. That'd be great. And the other thing that we're going to do is invite our local legislators so they can see how long it takes to get from point A to point B and back. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times when you're going in front of you know, um, different boards or committees, they don't necessarily have that lived experience um, where some people in our community who may be advocating also don't have that lived experience. So it's just to give people the tangible life experience to see how long it takes to get from point A to point B. Jennifer? Yes. Um, I think our local legislators are really familiar with that. It's when that. the people from the eastern part of the state come here mm -hmm. and they need to use public transportation that they really get it. Because when they've come out here and found out there's people in the hill towns 
that don't have internet. They're like, what? How could that be? You know, it's the eastern part of the state and getting money out of those people that is a big problem. Natalie Blay is very aware. Oh, yeah. Uh, Natalie, she's, Joe, yeah. Mindy, they, they all know. They live here. They, they, know. They, were, they jumped right on this application. The, you know, we yes. had a very short deadline to get letters. They, they wrote letters of support for our partnership, too, for ours. So, so they, they are aware of how long it takes. I mean, we've been very much advocates and letting them know it. I sat in a commission and I told them, I said, if I'm in my house in Hamden, I have no cell service and they're looking at me like, what? And I said, yeah, and then you go into some sections of Westfield and the bus cannot communicate. So if you go the other way, there's nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. And they were flat, and they were like, really? And I said, yes, you have to stand outside and mm -hmm. move a little to try to get something. Right. And some people in the eastern part of the state that have no idea and, what and we're dealing with out here. And you know, there's more reps over there than there's here. It's all based on population. So when they all raise their hands and the other ones are putting them down, it's it, it's it's an issue. But I think, you know, the new administration it's fully aware of that there is so many communities in Massachusetts and it's not all centered <coughs> to Boston or you know It doesn't end at four ninety five anymore. Correct. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, so, sir. Um, we are, I understand we went to the, um, the regional transit summit in Holyoke, and there's uh, there we learned about uh, the Great Bottle Connector mm -hmm. substitute bus service that yeah, I think you guys provide, and also a fixed bus route that goes into Worcester. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, so uh, providing a precedent for having a bus that can go across. RTA zones. So, is this grant is this the proposal, something like that, going to be? It's it not as 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 involved as the Amherst Worcester route, but this is yeah. a similar concept. Yes, it's still connecting two RTAs. Mm -hmm. Is this a M Mass Doc grant? This is a Mass Doc grant, the Community Transit Grant Program. The uh, Amherst Worcester route is funded by a Mass Doc Intercity grant. So, it's slightly separate funding stream. Mm -hmm. And the issue on that one that was a little bit more difficult is that we were bringing uh, a PVTA driver into a Worcester yes. Union driver area. And so we had to get permission to do that. And that became a little bit, U.S. Transit does not have a union labor. And at that time, you know, the vehicle is leaving UMass Transit, but it's been operated by Quebec that doesn't have a union going into a union area, bringing it. PVTA bus. So we had to take all the PVTA out of the bus. So the buses are wrapped so that they could go into that area. When we cannot use the big bus because there's not a CDL driver and we send a smaller van, mm -hmm. the van says PVTA, but they're used to seeing those and they don't think that's a big bus, but we're transporting people as if it were a big bus. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit a big of an issue with the union. Mm -hmm. um, our union was fine. But they got phone calls, the rep said to me, like, what, what's going on and all that stuff. But it was like, we're just sending a bus to Union Station in Worcester. Mm -hmm. And as Paul remembers, it became a big deal. So the buses are wrapped, and they won't set PVTA anywhere. It's out of the way. Oh, yeah, it's a little tiny. The license plate will say PVTA. Yeah. It, it's, it, but, it, but it gives you an idea of the barriers that they are that we're trying to systematically slowly mm -hmm. move forward, like saying, okay, yes, we're from different RTAs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do we really need to figure out who's writing here, who's getting the money, who's going to pay mm -hmm. if the whole thing is kind of like together? Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a fair, we have a fair. Mm -hmm. um, those type of things that we're just slowly, slowly overcoming those things as everyone in the area is going more that way and over there is going more the other way, you know. So um, slowly but surely we are planning to get there. We've had uh, extensive conversations. Uh, Tina and I traveled together uh, to go to meetings in Boston. We carpool with BRTA as well. So we are also looking to see a route between BRTA and um, Springfield. Peacefield to Springfield. Never, it never comes to pass. <laughs> so um, that's one of the things that they would like to do after they saw that we're doing Spring, uh, Amherst to Worcester and said, oh, we, we can do something like that. So, you know, you're breaking down those barriers as needs come up 
and become more loud and more squeaky and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. I think uh, working with Tina and you know having mm -hmm. an opportunity for an hour and a half to sit in the car and just go, okay, like what do we do? How do we do this and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. That was a conversation before we called you um, to um, to say, okay, let's do this grant application, and, and we both agree and then said, okay, let's write a partner and then move forward, and, and that's when. Uh, we said to Paul, go ahead, submit the grant application the way that you're structuring it um, because we have to ask permission to go into someone else's transit area and, and we were able to work that out on the ride to Boston. Wonderful. The, uh, the other question that I have is, um, where do you, do you post your statistical data about your ride um, information on the website? Yes, we are very transparent. We have a lot of information monthly information on our, it's called uh, Open Government. I open think government. it's on our, on our, on our, our performance our, measures. If you just go to the About section on the website. Great. And so it will right do you by route and all that stuff. Uh, we we have a, a, a committee of the board, it's called the Root Committee, and on a monthly basis, Paul and his staff do an analysis of the performance of each of the routes. What's the website? pvta.com. Oh. Great, thank you. We are working also in making it more user friendly mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes to get to certain areas you have to click and click and click and click and I think that's too many clicks. So we're kind of like two, three clicks at the max. You should be able to get the data that you need. So finding we are your, working, finding working your on that. phone number was the chat <laughs> and the email. So mm -hmm. um, we were able to get that. But yeah, for, um, for some of the users, the question that we did have about that was how often is it evaluated and updated? Um, and you know, were there plans in place to make it a little more user friendly? Um, but it sounds like yes. you're evaluating that now. Yeah, um, they actually they have the backup and they're just transferring the data. And I guess that takes a long time to do. Yeah, I've done user end design, it can take a while. So mm -hmm. it's not just click, click. Right, right. That That's what I was doing. Yes, it is. There's a lot of data on our website. Um, did anyone else have any other specific questions that weren't touched upon yet yeah. today, Bill? My wife is in a wheelchair. Yes. So she needs a little extra. And, and you talk about the riders that we've, we've gone to uh, meetings on, on riding and stuff. <laughs> And the people doing the meeting watch this come in because she was the only person there in a wheelchair. And they wouldn't discuss any of our concerns during the meeting. Every time we had a question, we said, we'll talk to you special after the meeting. Nothing in front of everybody else. Important people were there. Everything. Everybody watched. And then there are people that aren't 60 years old and they have disabilities. Yeah. They can't walk or they're in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. No, those people really need transportation. Yeah, we do that also. Too. Yep, they said they offered that before. Mm -hmm. And and after going through all that, you're looking at the person in a wheelchair that has to go through hoops to get approved for a ride, for you know, and, and get your pass and, and all this. It, it's like a, an insult to the person in a wheelchair. They need call up for the ride, and well, you're in a wheelchair, so you, you need assistance. Okay, so. Can, can I finish? Please? Yes, please. And the person says, well, if you can make it to the truck stop, and wait, we, we can pick you up. Uh, and how do you get there in a wheelchair? Do they think that, you know, there are people that need the service that, they're off the beaten path. We we're more than uh, uh, one mile, they claim, or something off the route. So now you can't get picked up. And, and they didn't really address that problem. So, it, you know, you talk about transportation and stuff. And so when did you try to make that trip? Yeah. This, this has been a couple of years ago. Okay, so we have a totally different vendor for PDTA. Mm -hmm. So, the, if you call the phone number 
and I'm going to, regardless of whether your your wife has a wheelchair or not, you just let them know. But for this system, you don't need to go through an application process. And because you're 60 and over, your wife qualifies for it. Does not have to be three quarters of a mile from the fixed route. This one does, because it operates the same days and the same hours as the bus. Um, but some and, women need to, it's a member community. No, no, I understand that. Even, even PDTA, you, don't, you can still, we, we serve the whole town. No, I know for that, right? For paratransit as well. For paratransit yeah. as well, okay. And if you go to, to South Deerfield, to where the senior center is located, and if you stand outside in the parking lot, you'll see our seniors coming in. And a lot of them have problems with walking. They're either canes or whatever. And everybody uses their handicap pass that, that drives in because they're, they're disabled or they you know, can't walk a long distance. So, so but they don't cover P so PBTA does not do. cover that area. It's so FRTA. that's an FRTA location. So do you live in Sunderland? He lives in Waitley. I live in Waitley. So that yeah, that's the challenge. We don't have service in Waitley. Well, I'm yeah. just so right. and so that's why they that's, said okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're outside of their service area, which is a, we yeah. There's nothing that we unfortunately can do about that at this point in time. So this Wait. does not include Waitley. No. No. So Wait, if but you discriminate. When, when, one second, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, how far away from the Whaley Park and Ride are you? Probably, probably the mile, maybe a little bit more. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But but I know that Sam or uh, that Tina spoke with you after the meeting last month, and that you got the application approved, right? Yeah. So you got your issue resolved. Uh, not really, but we're still. They're still in process of working on that. <coughs> She's the one that originally uh, we talked to up there and, and stuff, and, and that's that's how it got when we needed a ride. So you know, maybe she wasn't on the phone call that day when we were trying to sign up, and it, it didn't work out real good. So, but since the beginning of June, have you tried to use it since? No. Okay, so we don't have a more recent issue because. Like Sandra mentioned, I know that the vendors change for each of the FRT or each of the RTAs, you know, over a period of time. So hopefully, your experience moving forward, you know, will be will be less stressful and more helpful. And, and if you make a phone call to book the trip with FRTA, because there's Wayne and in Pennsylvania, wherever you go, I, I know they have the Medi Ryan and all that stuff. And if it doesn't work, call her directly and say, hey, I met you here and you said this is what's going to happen. Because that's what people do. Like if you call me and said, hey, we were here. And I said, okay, yeah, I remember you. And you said, and you said to me, there's something wrong with my application. Or, or I called and they're not giving me the trip. Then I'll go over, talk to Paul, and we'll go over and talk to the vendor. I said, okay, what's going on? We, we gave you the information. This is the individual that wants to ride. And something's not working and we will resolve the issue and I know that she will resolve the issue for you as well. And one of the other questions that, that I had was, you know, you talked about the local area, but we also probably gonna need a trip to Boston or Worcester and, and that just, nobody can transfer you to how many people to, to get there. So it, it's... Do you have a PT1 form for that? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the challenge is for a transit company, it just, it's such a huge cost. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge strain on resources, and we're all short staffed. So that's one of the bigger challenges right now. But to put a van in service from Springfield or Waitley, wherever, to Boston, would take a van in the service for the whole day. And then we got to wait and get you back. So I understand the need, but it, it's way beyond our scope of service. We've gone to medical appointments, and the uh, guy is waiting out there in the van, waiting for the person. It's going in for the yeah, home. I know that's that's for the human health transportation services, non medical, emer non emergency medical transportation, and for that you need a PT one form, and that's given by your doctor. So I think that's um, uh, health and human services. Okay. And Good so that's non emergency transportation for medical appointments, and those are the the state has a contract with Massachusetts. They're the ones that provide statewide transportation for individuals because you should be given a PT1 form if your wife needs to go over there and you qualify for that service. Um, I know that that's, uh, Massachusetts is the one that uh, FRTA mentioned last month that student carries 
out those particular yeah, ones. to go to so, Boston. Yeah, they, they have the state contract that. to transport people to medical appointments that are that outside. Non-emergency. Non-emergency uh, transportation, uh, part of the uh, health and human service transportation. Mm -hmm. and it's Medicare and Medicaid. Right. And, and you, you need a PT, that's the form called PT1 form that's done with the doctor's office. From the doctor. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if it's the doctor's office that issues it or the transportation at HST that does it, but once the PT1 is issued, then you can book your trips with Massachusetts and they will send a vendor from this area to pick you up and bring you to Boston. Because yeah, I have a friend in Northampton who's got Parkinson's. She occasionally needs to go to Boston. She's got to find a friend to take the whole day, drive her stay. But there's right. a service that she could access. Uh, it's so she you have to reach out to the Health and Human Service Office. Yeah, the, the, yeah, and, the doctor and has find to refer that. it. I so if it's, it's, a, a referral it's usually a referral or a prescription your doctor provides for that. To and who? To, um, the, to, to the, the patient and who would contact the a, human, Health and Human Services for the PT1 form. Massachusetts is the statewide yeah. for Western Mass provider. provider. The, the tra yeah. yeah, the transportation. And then God tries for the uh, the cape and all that stuff. Well, thank you so much. Unless you know, there's any more specific questions, I'm sure um, you know we could ask them offline. But um, thank you all for coming out today. We will definitely work together. To, uh, to facilitate getting the brochures and information. Oh, yes. So thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. Thank you.